are the alpha and the omega of your own life if only you realize this reality and my name is SAX and I'm the man behind the conscious room and today let's go there man thank you yeah you can hear what's going on but if you're on the link you can there's my song going on on air so use the link and listen to that you can share you know share this video i hope they, they can't hear me they can't hear me out there yeah they can't hear you out there yeah Ah, we on commercial break, you know. Yeah, share the video and tell somebody to tell somebody we're coming back. We're on a commercial break now. Uh, let me show you what's going on. Now. Say hi. Mm -hmm. ah. Ah. Okay, let me sing this for you. Listen. Right from the beginning, it be war for supremacy. Millions of black people we killed. We've been through slavery. Yeah. Ah, 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 ah. Imagination down to date. Black people still living on that mental slavery. Why? In the year 83, 25. I saw the tears from the skies. It was at the council of the Nasia. They took your took your black god and made him white. It's time for Aquarius. It's time, yo, oh, to wake up now. We gonna be like. Wasting our time, waiting on the God of the sky. He will never gonna come, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know be like, yeah. We wasting our time, waiting on the God of the skies. Ah. Ah, 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 Take your place, Africa. Oh, oh, oh. Take your place now, Africa life. Woo. I wanna know, I wanna know Gonna be like Waiting on the God of the skies, yeah African life Yeah, I'm ready. You can ask whatever question you want to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Ready, you're going. Ah, 
Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Still as a ace at Happenings Radio. It's my pleasure and I must appreciate you for inviting me over here. I've always wanted to have a platform to speak to our people. You see, black men don't understand that it's us against the rest. We don't know this fact. And that's the reason everything you see, every life you live is important. Because they've stolen who you are, replaced it with what they want it to be. Instead, and uh, if you don't know your history, you don't know your culture, you have no future. And uh, you can see the men in government, the men in the media, they all project this um, programs, you know, to your brains. They want, they want you down. And against all odds, some of us just have to stand up, you know, and speak. I'm not the only one speaking. So it doesn't look like it's a one-man war going on. That's, it's time for Aquarius. And the universe has revolved to an extent that I don't need you to teach me. I learn, you know, I can absorb this whole thing, interpret it and make sense of it. And uh, sometimes five years back, I began to pick this energy, analyze it, and I realized that everything I, we live in is a false world we're living in. It's a world that favors very few people against the rest. And those that enslaved us at a point in time, you know, we all know about the black slavery, the cross-Atlantic slavery and the Sahara, cross-Sahara slavery that went on in Africa. They are still very much around, but they moved from the flesh, from the physical to the unseen. That is the mental slavery going on in Africa uh no it's not a business it's not business but i took it upon myself that i would give at least five years you know to this struggle to wake up some people and break the the, the tribal lines break the religious lines because it's all about lines that separate us there's no us there's all, it's always a muslim and then he's a christian and then both of you can marry you're a muslim and you're shite and he's a sunni both of you can marry you're a christian a catholic and she's a Anglican, you can't get married, you know. And meanwhile, we're the same people, the same blood running, you know. And uh, it's a Igbo, you're about sir, and all the whole shit they created. We're fighting and killing ourselves. And I tell you, man, this is just too much. We had to do something about it. And when there was nothing coming from the government, nothing coming from the system, because they're all part of the system, uh, what they call uh, lone wolves have to come up. And we are part of the lone wolves coming up to speak up. So today I'm in this radio station to tell you that if your God does not look just the way you look, you are programmed. Your God does not have the melanin running in your skin, you're programmed. Your God does not have this hair, this kinky hair or nappy hair, they call it, you're programmed. If your God has got some sexy hair like the Jesus hair, then you're programmed. If your God has to come from the Arabian island, you know, in the guise of Muhammad or Allah, you're programmed. Now, let me take into the details. I say, people make God in their own image. God don't make people in their own image. That's my perception of everything. Because every God you find everywhere you go is created by the people. And they make God in their own image. Go to India, they have Krishna. Krishna has a round face and lovely looking face like the Indians. And uh, you tell an Indian guy or a child to depict God in their own image. By the way of drawing, they're going to draw a God that looks just like them. You tell a Chinese man to depict a god in their own in the, in the god in any image they wish, and they're gonna look Chinese Buddha, you know. And it's also good, very good that you see God in your own image because it helps you to understand, to feel balanced, and feel part of this universe, you know, to feel to have contributed to the balance, you know, while we're still living here. Then you move up to Japan, you tell a Japanese little ja child to draw God in, you know, and they're gonna give you a Shinto looking god Japanese. You move to Europe super europe british the americans and all that you have you know to give you a god you know depict a god for me it's gonna look in jesus and that's european face you go to Ara arabian peninsula wherever you go they give you a god muhammad arabic looking the names and everything that troubles all he did on earth it's not like we don't have it here in africa but right now if i tell an african child to draw a god for me he's gonna give me a jesus and a muhammad that's the program don't see God in your own image because God is God of creation. He created the whole world. So if you begin to see God in your own image, you begin to recreate this world how you want it. But if you have to see God in someone else's image, then he has to create the world you live in. And that's what we have in Africa. He's going to give you <laughs> a Jesus world, you know, 
And that's why every come to a papa, I mean a papa now, everything is coming into Nigeria. Trailers trying to take things to every other places. We're not producing because we are not chineke. Chineke putife. Chineke. God the create creation. You know, this is the fact you have to understand about this whole God thing. Because when you go shouting Holy Ghost fire, let's look about the economics. There's something in it, you know. It's deeper than that. But now it's not like we didn't have God here. We always had God in our own image before they came. When they came, they came in the guise of a uh, missionary, you know, mission of Aris. Go check what is Aris. You know, they came and they told you that, yeah, what you're doing is not good. There's a savior. Come on, how has this God saved you for over, over 200 years of worshiping this God? You've not been saved. Those that gave you the God are still the ones saving you. And I see the Europeans as my God now because every medicine, everything you have, they give to you what I want, the black looking guy. So they told you, everything you're doing is not good. It's like ancestors were not taking it. And the military had to come. The crusaders, the Roman empires came. They killed, they maimed, destroyed everything, took our resources, took millions of our black people, millions, I say, to all over the world. They developed their world. They took scientists. They took doctors. You know, took the best you can think about because civilization is from Africa, Egypt. And I know a lot of you are going to argue with me that, by the way, the people they have in Egypt are white. No, those are not Egyptians. Because the Egyptians, Egyptians you see today, you shall see no more. It's in the Bible, you know? So they virtually killed the black men living there, made them minorities and put their people there to actualize this. Donald Trump is still trying to actualize that today by claiming that Israel is the, uh, Jerusalem is the capital of Israel and then Golan Heights and all that. It's just programs, you know? Don't be so emotional about this thing. Don't get yourself so... No, like, it's just a program someone wrote somewhere. And if you can't feel this message, listen to the man speaking it. It's not for popularity, but I found that what shall it profit me to live this whole life and leave it behind this way? I'm a father of three, and I have to speak to free up their minds, you know. So if you're out there, you're listening to us, it's time you, you go do some research to understand what's going on so far. So we had Shongo, we had Oledumari, we had Chuku, Chineke, Amadio, Haubangiji. We had Mansa. We had different gods in Africa and they all looked like us. In Mansuka language, today they call them Ngweja. That is artifacts that look so dirty that are not good. But the Jesus artifact is good because it's white. No wonder our sisters are bleaching their skins today. No wonder today they are calling their hair. They all just want to look like Jesus of Nazareth. Don't, don't miss that. It's Jesus of Nazareth. It's not for you. It's for you. It should have been Jesus of Africa. And he came for the lost tribe of Israel. He didn't come for you. I'm going from the Bible. You know, a lot of you don't read this book. You don't study this book. This book is meant for some people. It's God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's not God of is a fine chick or you. And because he loves this track, today they give you some funny names. You know, names. Uh, James, John, Peter, and your and Mr. James, and Professor this. Fuck that nonsense. That's not who you are. Go back to your African spirituality and understand who you are. They took away yourself and gave you something. These names are spells. I was giving Kingsley as a name, but when I woke up, I did woke up. I said to myself, I am going to go with this any longer. I have to go back to my original name, who I am. And I don't care how you feel about it. I don't care how the universe feel about it because I'm part of that universe, you know. Once you're connected, you know, you can actually make decisions for yourself. I went back to Isaiah Fine Chiku. If you can't pronounce that, it's your problem, not mine. You understand? Yeah, because if you can pronounce all the Russian names and all the Arabic names we pronounce today, they should be able to learn to pronounce us. I'm not trying to be defiant. I'm trying to go against the wind. I'm just trying to be realistic. So back to spirituality. Today, they have trained some men. They call them men of God, prof uh, prophets. Uh, apostolates and all the names they give themselves. I tell you honestly, we don't have fake pastors. We have fake God, fake savior in our land. So anybody that goes along that line, they are all fake. So there's none good. It doesn't matter. He's so rich. He, he flies many private jets. He could do that because he didn't wake up. He could not remember the past. Uh, I hope I have no time to go on. Okay. So, I, I, I'll be going and I'll be explaining to you the ancient knowledge, the ancient knowledge, how it's been and what it was and uh, how they have plagiarized everything to today's reality you see. 
And I tell you that Jesus is not from Nazareth. The real character is from, I said character, is from Egypt. And that's why I say he's a fake God. He's not God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's Osiris or Asara of Egypt. He's not Jesus, it's called Horus. That's about 5,000 years now in Egypt. Because you know the civilization started from Egypt. Religions from Egypt, fashion and design. It's not like it's from Egypt, but that's the one they documented. It also started from Igbo land, Oduduwa land. These were great kingdoms that you, the whole world came to, to learn from. But now we are welcoming people. We love people. We share everything we have. And when they had perfected our knowledge, they thwarted it. They turn it around. And today, they are still turning it around. Are you getting it? So, in ancient Egypt, 3000 BC, is not before Christ. It's before common era. Check it out. It's not before Christ. There was a God called Asara. Married to Aset. Hmm? Yeah, thank you. Sorry. Asa, yeah, Sarah, 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 Sarah series. Then the brother called Seth, who was very jealous of this powerful God in form of a man, killed him, cut the body in pieces, and threw it at the banks of River Nile. The wife, Seth, picked up this body, put it together, but she could not find the penis. Don't forget that. She couldn't find the penis, but she was able to find every other pass and put it together, left it there, went back home. At night, the spirit of that Asara, uh, Asa, made love to her and she conceived horrors. Does that sound striking to you? Immaculate conception going on. And three days after that, this body of this man, this God, came back to life resurrection jesus woke up after three days this is three thousand years before it happened this is an african story you know i'm not making it up it's out there for you to go and check it out and this asara was very powerful at the age of 12 he was called the most high jesus was called the most high he was teaching in the synagogue he was considered to be very very intelligent the same thing with jesus but don't forget that this, when this was going on, Europeans were still living in the cave. Because the first university to be built in Europe, in Spain, was built by the by Africans called the Moors. You don't know this. So when I speak, I speak knowledge. I don't speak for you to argue. I speak for you to challenge me with facts and figures, realities. Are you getting it? So this continued. And um, this God was born on December 25th, you know. December 25th. He lived for, I'm talking about Horus. He lived for 33 years, died. But don't misunderstand me. This is not a reality. It's not something that happened in the real sense. It's an astrological reality, people's mythology. Because the sun in the sky, which is Horus, has how many zodiac signs around it, uh, 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 constellations around it? The uh, 12. Eat the sun being the 13th. Jesus, having how many apostles? 12. And Jesus being the son of God, the light of the world, the 13th. Jesus is the son. Who else is the son? You understand? And um, Christmas, uh, Horus was born on December 25th, Jesus 25th, Krishna 25th, Buddha 25th, and the Mitra and the rest of them, you know, continued that way. Because uh, on the 22nd of December, the sun goes south. South is grave. South. And on 25th, it comes up north, the bed of the sun winter sources and those who live around where they experience this celebrated it because it's a good thing you know the, the sun comes sun, sun without the sun we all die so before the, three days in the south people are actually feeling feeling the absence and it's about they're celebrating life you know and it's as that is a christmas this one has always been celebrated it's not called christmas you know but when the europeans began to change the realities they made this the birth of jesus but don't forget three thousand years before that horus was celebrated you're celebrating your Easter now, which is just the uh, Easter, the god of sex and fertility. I don't want to digress too much. 
but that just has to do with some sex and other things going on in Europe in those days. And don't forget that before then, we have only had 40 days of fasting of Osiris in Egypt. So everything came from Egypt. But the Europeans know that for them to conquer Africa, the God has to look like them exactly. Because when the, an African sees a, a God in the, in, the, in, the, in the face of a European, he's going to be seeing the Europeans as God, you know, God's people. And anything they say and do is the, is the reality, you know, we all should follow. It. That's a fact. And then they have to make the devil, of which they told us, well, an angel, very beautiful in the sky, uh, with God and looking like God and powerful as God, but he came down to earth and he's got black. Uh, whenever they put Angel Gabriel, you know, stepping on the black devil, it's always black man. And we sh put this in our houses because we are not woke. I don't know how good I've done in this narrative, but I just want to let you know that everything you know, everything they have said to you was copied from you. And to buttress further, Jesus died at the age of 33. Your backbone is 33 number. And for you to be crash like your consciousness have to move from your chakra at your waist your blood chakra up to your pineal gland and you're a christ you become christ like in the ancient egypt they call it karast europeans call it christ you know so it's a shameful thing that i ask somebody tells me is a christian how are you a christian man? you're an african peter touch says that which you where you come from as long as you were black man, you are an African. No matter your nationality, you have got the identity of an African. What's the identity? It's your 666. Your Antichrist. Your six protons, six neutrons and six electrons. Your carbon 12. That that makes you a black man. The human being. And the rest of them are just mankind. But you understand. You are the first to be here. You should be proud of yourself, black people. You are the Aboriginal to this earth. You occupy the whole world before you created them. But today they are written different stories trying to take you away from yourself. They tell you came from an Adam and Eve. Brother, we don't come from no Adam and Eve. The writers of the book of Adam and Eve came from us. And you should be proud to say this. If you don't know this, you have to know it. You have to study further. The men in the altar, they are the criminals. They are the agents. They are all one people. And no wonder they defend themselves. And when we are killed, they speak not. In New Zealand, some terrorists went into a mosque, unfortunately, killed about 50 people. I said 50 people. But in Nigeria for the past two weeks, we have lost almost 500 people. Is not in the news. Why? You have the bishop, you have the everything, you have the Roman Catholic Church. We are doing second collection for them, building rooms for them, spending our money, buying private jets, and building the estates and universities and everything they have, but they cannot even speak when we are being killed. Because we are just like goods for them. And speaking against that would mean speaking against the power at the top. Making me to realize that the terrorism we have in this country today are not just an accident. They are calculated. Keep them distracted. Keep them busy with something. It's like we're getting away from the churches and the mosques. So now we have to struggle to stay alive. You know? And I ask myself, how many lives of a black man is equal to one life of a white man? Today, you're suffering HIV. You're suffering from uh, Ebola, diseases, syphilis. And they have convinced and confused some of you to believe that these things came from God. Fuck such God. We don't need such God that gives us sicknesses. These were cultured and made in different laboratories to keep them busy. Because once they are busy with sicknesses, of course, you can take the coltan, cobalt, the diamond, the gold, the oil. Keep them busy. Keep them busy with music. Keep them busy, of course, with football. You know, they have to be busy with something. Or keep them busy with tribal tribalism, tribalizing against each other. Ah, outside better than Yoruba and all that. But I tell you, if you go back to the ancient world, if you can remember, because you were here before now, we were not fighting this way because we saw ourselves as one people. 
And uh, when I speak Yoruba, because I understand Yoruba to an extent, and I speak Igbo, I, I, the same thing. It sound alike. But today, somebody saying that Igbo should leave Lagos. Why? Why is the Chinese not leaving Lagos? Why are the Indians not leaving Lagos? Why are the Europeans not leaving Lagos? Why should an Igbo man leave his, his home? Because we have forgotten. We have been programmed. They have put a lot of fluoride in our food. They have blocked our thinking faculty. We can't reason. In South Africa, as we speak now, they are murdering and killing a lot of black people. But Indians are walking free. Because Jesus is Lord. And Jesus is a white God. And the white God is Lord. You just have to understand this. So, see, the information is out there for you to go and get it and use it. Use it. You understand? Get this information and use it. Jesus is not a savior. He's a killer. If Jesus is a savior, there wouldn't have been slavery in the first place. But slavery has been here and it's gone and Jesus is still the Lord. And, uh, if he, sorry, the light just went off, but it's okay. We still we have the backup. But slavery has come and gone. And if you see what's going on in America today, you see they're killing our people there. But they shoot our people dead and nobody says a thing. But they kill some Christians in, in Syria and they are doing second mass and third mass for the sake of the people in um, Syria. You don't see bloodline. You see religion. That's unfortunate. You don't understand that we are one people wherever you where, wherever you come from. I love this song from Bamali, and uh, if you don't mind, I would like to go by it a little bit. It says, "Until philosophy, which holds one race superior and another what? inferior, is finally." and permanently discredited and abandoned everywhere is war hear that is a war until there's no longer first class nor second class citizens of any nation until the basic human rights are equally guaranteed to all without regards to race is a war and until that day the dream of last and peace war on citizenship rule of international morality will remain a conflicting illusion to be pursued but never attained for everywhere is war ask me now is it not war is war in the east, is war in the west, is the war in the south and the war in the north because of this. Your church is your destruction, is a white supremacy establishment you're living in. Don't be colorblind to that. You're a, a, a Catholic because that's where I broke away from. Look around the church 360 and tell me if you see any character looking black. No one. They are all St. Peter, St. Paul. St. Matthew, Bartholomew, and the rest of them. That is your reality. 360, you know. Yes, then. For the God must be white and the devil must be black. If you have accepted to be evil, it cannot be good. Your vibration will remain low. So wake up. I don't know how to say this anymore. But until... We begin to build institutions, hospitals, schools of not Western education, but African education, of which every little child of five years, 10 years must know what I know today. You mustn't be up to 35 to 40 years to know what I know. You should be able to grow with this. That becomes your reality. You know your friend and you know your enemy. You grow. We are low, 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 low. In the United Nations, there's no African country that is a permanent member. There's no African country that has a nuclear weapon. And I tell you, if you want peace, you must have a nuclear weapon. Because if you are insane, you don't go mess up with America, they dissolve you. So let them be. 
But terror terrorists are walking around everywhere, criminals everywhere, destroying Africa because we don't have a deterrent. We are fighting in war. That's war going on in Africa within ourselves. We hate ourselves. But actually, I tell you, we don't hate ourselves. We've been made to believe that we are enemies of each other. I'm an Igbo man, you know? And um, you know what that means? Uh, I'm supposed to be Igbo against the rest. But because I know Yoruba man is my brother. Are you getting it? Yoruba man is my, is one of me, you know? I, I don't think he, I can't do without him. A, a Ghanaian man is also part of me. So it's a serial is part of me. So when they suffer HIV, I feel it too. They suffer Ebola, I feel it too. And because I know better, I know these things are not supposed to be so, but somebody wants you busy. Somebody wants to say, sell antineutroviral drugs. You know, somebody wants to bring in some AIDS, you know. So my people, wake up. The time is now. It's time of Aquarius. Let me explain a little bit on Aquarius. Aquarius is every... Uh, in every 2000, 2016 years, the world ends and a new world starts. Mm. In the year 2000, the world ended. And don't forget, it, they were told that the world was going to end. Mm. And we, we didn't understand because we didn't see water flood the world as they were told about it. Noah's Ark and all the shit or the fire to come and burn us all. But the world ended. The world, the world of control ended. The world of Pisces ended. And now we are in the world of Aquarius, which is the world of knowing standing out and don't think you can feel it after that year you can see technology took a new turn we all have our we are broadcasting to the world you know it's a radio station on your own and you're, you're speaking to the world i'm speaking to the world through my facebook this is the era of aquarius and of course you could see uh, women you know feminism you know you could see people wanting to be free war all over the places Arab spring and all that they want to be free and even in the church, you can see the Catholic Church losing members to Pentecostal churches and all that. This kind of decomposing the system. But I feel now that we have this information, Africa should organize herself, or herself and uh, have a focus to utilize the information and the energy coming to earth right away. We shouldn't be standing to fight and because now you want to talk about America. So America was not built in a day. They had wars and they had all that. Man, that was there. We had our own too. Are you getting it? It's time we begin to make things good for ourselves. And to make this thing happen, unfortunately, we must see God in our own image. And if you agree with me that Jesus is not in our own image, why not do away with Jesus? If for adventure you feel that Muhammad is not in our own image, let's not do away with it. If, if Jesus is for us, Go to the book of Luke, chapter 19, verse 27. I said chapter 19, verse 27. Jesus said that bring all those who refuse to fall under my leadership and slaughter them before me. You can check your Bible. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob went to the book of Numbers, chapter 31, verse 17 to 19, and said, Kill all the men, kill all the women that have slept with a man, and then preserve for yourself the virgins. Yeah, man. If the God uh, encourages rape and this virginity of people, you can only tell what's going on. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 18, the Bible said, Slaves, obey your masters. I said slaves. Not only he who is kind, but also he who is harsh, for he pleases the same Jesus when he takes pain for doing nothing. Why are you not reading this to our people? I married an American today. She possibly could be an Igbo man or Yoruba man. A Yoruba woman, but um, they were taken as slaves. They are not indigenous to that place. So it's a reality slavery took place. But why are these things not taught to us? You're teaching me about uh, God of Abraham, how Paul was accosted on his way to Damascus and all that. You're not talking about Obolafo, the great Obolafo. No, you're not talking about the great Nsuka. You're not talking about Enugu. You're not talking about the Igbos. You're not telling me about the Jebu people. You keep flooding my mind with things that are irrelevant to me. And that's why today we don't love ourselves. You understand? So this is the movement. And uh, as I, I, I told you, I'm not the only one speaking up. All over the world, people have been speaking up. Fellas spoke up. How Jesus, they enjoy. You heard it. You know? Pope, Joseph, they enjoy. But 
who were so hypnotized by the Jesus spell, which is the ghost spell. You know, it's only here people call on ghosts to save them. How can an intangible save the tangible? Holy Ghost fire to do what? Have you seen a Holy Ghost fire before? You know, it's crazy. The real Holy Ghost fire I know of is a nuclear weapon. When you see it, you feel it. And that's why those that have the Holy Ghost fire, the nuclear weapons, are revered and respected. Because you mess up with them, it's a little thing and you're gone. <laughs> Are you getting it? But you be in the church, you shouting, Holy Ghost, fire, fire this, fire that. Yeah, you fucking up, man. In the end, you're going to let go of your money and somebody's going to smile to the bank in the money. And what happens to this money? This money is taken to the system, the Rothschild family system. This money is circulated and given loans are given to the men with a collateral, uh, the collateral, I mean, uh, collateral, collaterals, you know. Yeah. And uh, do you have collateral? To get a million dollars no so the money is still going your money in the church is going back to the hands of the dangotes and the tunibus and the rest of them that can afford a collateral and they're going to make products and sell to you so you pay in the church they make they make products with your money you go to the market and buy it and it's election time they go to the bank and pick, take money from the bank and sponsor some talks that will come to your neighborhood and kill you and do all shit with you and you have sponsored your own destruction because we are not work Yes, then. So, our uh, people out there you're listening to me, my name is Eze Ifan Chuku. They call me Eze X, and I'm on Facebook. My Facebook handle is Eze Ifan Chuku. Yeah, and I have Eze X, my Facebook page. Uh, it's important you join us as we try to wake up our people. It's not easy. I know the time will come, they will come for the head of the speaker. But uh, I believe that it's the part of the ancestors that have sent us out to speak up will guide us. If our adventure they want us to join them, we don't care. You know, we don't care actually. So our people, uh, it's time to wake up. Black people all over the world. I'm, I'm speaking for just those living in Africa. If you're out there in America, you've not been here. You are part of your own destruction. You have to be here. And then put your money where it can be safe, where it cannot be taken away. Just a single policy and you lose everything you have out there. And it's time you begin to send your children down here to actually fraternize with their relatives here because we are all distance cousins you see uh no government in africa is teaching this except ghana ghana has opened up her borders for every black out there outside africa to come back home yeah, and that's applaudable i appreciate the leadership of ghana for doing this i urge other african countries of course which nigeria should be leading because we have the the land we have the resources we are very rich to do this but we are busy fighting within ourselves who becomes the president is it from the north is it from the south and all that please don't call i'm on radio station so i can't pick up calls please yes then so we just have to understand this it's not about listening to nt nt is just uh, another dungeon where they program you they cannot say anything that the government does not approve the ait they can't say anything it's under control and those are like internet radios and all that because this gives you the room to speak your minds you know the best minds are not the one you're listening to the best minds are not the one leading you it's the one they have been able to condition and assure that will represent their interest what's their interest resources so we are like goods and services in the hands of those that control the world i tell you that the leader of america today, the president of america is actually not not, not the president He's just a salary earner. Somebody controls everything. That's how it's been made to be, you know? So when you hear them speak, they are actually not speaking for you. So our people have to wake up, wake up and wake up is now. There's no two ways about it. Drop your tribalism, drop it, drop it. It's not helping us and it will never help us. That doesn't mean I don't love my tribe. I only profess the spirituality of my tribe. I do. I don't know Jesus, I don't know Muhammad, I know nothing. I know the Chukwu Kikabiyama. But against all of us, for us to stand against the system that brought us down this far, we have to unite. And for us to unite, we have to become, uh, I don't want to say this, but let's drop the tribal lines and become more one people under the sun, you know, try and unify Africa. Because you can see United Nations, uh, I mean, the uh, European unions, these are Europeans coming together. 
But we're not talking about Africa actually coming together. We're talking about Nigeria coming together. And it's so difficult. The Boko Haram you have in the north, this is not um, an accident. It's calculated. And if I tell you that 25% of our budget has always gone to that fight every year, you can tell what I can do to alleviate poverty. Actually build school for children like the success we saw in uh, Delta State, you know? But we rather use this to buy guns, buy bombs and all that and kill our people and trying to protect our, the integrity of our nation within our nation against ourselves. But now the question is who's making those bombs? Who's making those helicopters, the jets, the bullets, the guns, the AKs? Someone is making it and somebody is gaining money. And don't forget that the Boko Haram is still buying from the same market and the federal government is buying from the same market. So it's a win-win situation for whoever is making it. And that person will never want to be out of business. So he's he will constantly would, uh, create programs that make this happen. This is what we have to understand. And Buhari in the power uh, has to listen to the man with the conscious mind because he's a religious mind. Man, if you have a religious mind, you can do nothing to save yourself. You are according to as written. Somebody wrote it 2,000 years ago or 1,500 years ago, and then you have to go by that. That the reality of today is not the reality of that, those days. So we have to evolve spiritually. That's the meaning of spirituality. The difference between spirituality and religion is that religion is really gear, it's a box. You remain within control. Mm -hmm. Spirituality is that yourself and the reality of the universe. So I'm a spiritual man, I'm not a religious man. And my spirituality must not be that of yours. That's why the people say, So the cheat thing is in us, it's us. So my chi is different from your chi. Mm. But when somebody comes and says that it's the way, the truth, and life, and nobody goes to the heaven, the happiness of life, except this man, a single man from a village, that man wants you to see everything according to how he wants you to see it. <laughs> you, you see it. And that's why Africans just have to understand this and wake the hell up. You know, wake up once. And um. I'm going to turn the camera now because it's like I'm the moderator and everything here now. I'm going to turn the camera now to my better half, my sweetheart, and she's going to speak a little bit. Hope that was okay. Uh -huh. Now, put on her camera and I'm turning it, turning it, turning it, turning it. Are you seeing something anyway? No. Maybe you turn it to that. Okay, don't worry. I'll do something. Okay. Oh, you just switch camera. Let me the camera. Yeah, so I can, yeah. Is it better? I can see it perfectly better. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Hello, everybody. I just wanted to say one thing. Um, me and my husband, we always talk about everything and we agree to disagree. But um, one thing I do want to say is that we all black people were not brought to America. We were already there. And that's a big misconception that we have is that we were just brought there and it was the Indians all there. That's a lie. If that was the case, then it would be more Indians in America than black people. You're right. It is about, it is probably, I, I have in my whole life, I've probably seen maybe 10 Indian families, like outside of the Indians that I already knew, just out eating. So the perception and a lot of things that they say to us are lies. And if, if you think about who is writing all these lies, they're going to tell you what they want to tell you. So you can think how you want to think. But um, I just wanted to say that because that's, that's definitely not true. Okay. Yeah, um, I agree with you. You're right. Because I've read some narratives. And then in the Christopher Columbus notes, he said that when he got to America, he found blacks trading with the mm -hmm. indigenous people. Mm -hmm. So you're right. The Moors. Yeah, the Moors. Yeah. So, but nevertheless, I know there are black Chinese still living now. Mm -hmm. There are black Indians, black Britain still living to date, black Russian, black Spanish. We were everywhere. We were everywhere. So your narrative is right. But we know about the cross Atlantic slavery, we knew all that happened. It, it, it happened, but we also have to understand that. that other things happened also. Yeah. You know, that yeah. we were already everywhere and we were already making great things and grand things. So um, I think sometimes when we just 
say about talk about like slavery, we get away from everything else that happened. Yeah, I get you. Because they're trying to make it look like that our history is just based on slavery, exactly. like they never had a good time. Exactly, and, exactly. And that's why I have to give the monologue to uh, Africa as uh, Egyptian spirituality, where they copied virtually everything. Islam was taken away from that too, you know. And um, I'm not a good Egyptology, you know. Like, that's the much I know. I just try to say the much I know. I don't want to believe that I woke up because I read about Egypt. I woke up because uh, it's the time to do that, and uh, I have to do that, you know. But thank you very much. Um, I want to ask you for the benefit of people out there. The awakening is now, and you can see this is motherland, and uh, I've never been out of this shop, man. The far farthest I've gone is Sokoto, and then I'm in Lagos now, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so what I want to ask is this: Are people waking up out there? Like, are people waking up too? I mean, people are definitely waking up everywhere. I mean, um, it's a global thing. We're in the age of Aquarius right now. So um, a lot of people are waking up. A lot of people are thinking different. Um, people are um, listening a okay. lot more than they have before. And I think the big thing about um, people switching or, or waking up is the fact that they don't want to be wrong. You know, you've been in a rela uh, religion or uh, relationship with some type of religion for so long and you hear something and you be like, okay, it makes sense. But still, it's like, I've been doing this for so long. Like, you can't take you can't take my Jesus away from me. You can't take my Muhammad away from me. You know, it's just, it's scary. It's scary. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's, the, that's one of the main issues why people are so afraid to just leave it alone. And another thing is that um, people like to go to churches and mosques for the um, community yeah. thing. You know what I'm saying? So they could be around somebody with like minds, mm -hmm. just like in a conscious thing, you know? Um, you wanna be around people who, who think the same, who have the same minds, who um, have the same ideals to a certain extent. Yeah, you're right. Thank you very, very much. You're Thank welcome. you very much, my queen. And it's my pleasure to have you here. Yeah, no. My pleasure to be here. Oh, thank you very much. And uh, we're back here again. We're back here again. And I'm still with a man, the limousine. He's the man, you know, he's the man here. And, uh, make no mistakes. Uh, I don't want your money. I don't want to be popular. But by the time you feel what I feel inside, you understand the reason why I'm so persistent in bringing you this reality. It hurts my feelings when I see revivals, Catholic or Christian revivals, and thousands of you are there. But then your election was rigged, rigged, point blank, and nobody protested. Nobody could come out and speak. He said, we leave it in the hand of God. That is it. <laughs> Go to the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 1. The Bible says that your leaders he chose for you. Everything they do is his will. Then tell me, don't you think that the men leading you today are the men that wrote those books? You have to understand. So we just have to wake up, you know, as a people, get our ass together. Because nature gave us so much. Everything. Nigeria and Congo is possibly the richer than the whole world put together. Congo and Nigeria, just these two countries. But they won't tell you that. They tell you that God cursed you. You know, in the Bible is there. And the, um, I can't remember the book, but Noah was sleeping and uh, he, he was drunk and his private past was showing out. Uh, the children that were white were covering him and the black child was uh, <laughs> laughing at him, making jests of him, and he cursed the black child. Mm -hmm. And I heard Enoch Adeboye, Enoch Adeboye, saying this to his pastors, that the black race are cursed. Hmm. He, I have the video. That we are cursed. How are we cursed? If the white God cursed you, curse the white God back. How can you be black and your God is white? And now that we stand, I have to have to say that um, the um, African spiritual practice we have today has been corrupted too. So one will not misunderstand me. I'm not asking you to go back to these magicians you have around and put all your faith in them. They're going to defraud you, take your money, kill you, rape you too 
because if they if they had us for 400 years or thereabout they were here or 280 years as they said but i believe they're still around they wouldn't have allowed our spirituality to remain the same but by their fruits you shall know them so a lot of people have always asked me do you want us to go back to this man that are raping people cutting head and all that that is that is i, I like explaining this in my Igbo language and when sana you know they were men and they went sana we have the the culture we have the forbidden ones which gave room for the alo say alo kose when they come up with this nonsense but you must not even go back to if you feel you don't want to go back there can as well be yourself you're a deity on your own find out yourself as an african love what is in you you know project positivity and good things will come to you it's a shame that you're building house for god the the maker of universe <laughs> the trees and everything you have and you have to do first collection second collection launching every to build house for that god what's the need for a god that can't build a house for himself <laughs> the same god that told you in the bible that i don't live in those cemented and brick houses that i live in you so if god lives in you why don't you pay tight in you build the house of god you know take care of this house of god why must you call somebody your spiritual leader and somebody have to listen to God to tell you what God said. Why is this God so gossipy? Telling somebody about you. Why is the God not telling you about yourself? <laughs> useless. <laughs> Completely useless, you know. <laughs> so you have to use common sense to understand this God system. God system is a white supremacy shit going on and you don't understand it. And that's why the God cannot be your image. You Catholics will go every Saturday, you know, you go to church and tell your sins to a man like you. Funny enough, some of the men that go to tell these reverend fathers their sins, your wife is sleeping with a priest every day, now and then. But he's not telling you about this whole thing going on. He's sleeping with your daughters. He's not telling you about this shit, but you're telling him about business that you, you defrauded someone. That was the way the white men used us. Intelligence gathering. They used the priest to go to the minds of our people and understand how we're talking about, about the imposition and everything on, in our land, how we can break free. And when they were leaving, they anointed some of us and called them Reverend Father, even though they don't have a child, they don't have a wife, but they're a father. Mm. Impotent father. Mm. You don't get it. They gave you imp things you can't just conceive. They gave you, make the reality and you accepted it. That's, we have to change the narrative now. We're not going to war because we are gone. We know. But at least we can talk to each other. And that's why I'm here. We can speak the reality to our minds, you know open up our minds to think and once your mind is open you can achieve you can receive you can transmit so we just have to understand this whole thing it's going on it's the fact going on and people don't get it i know a lot of you out there is going to be hating me now who's this boy and you listen to me from liberia you listen to me from ghana or america anyway hearing me from listen to my voice now i'm not insane i'm not a bad man I don't steal, I don't lie, I don't engage myself in negative things, you know. I'm very, very transparent and open-minded human being. And I'm concerned about you. And I know that you have been used, you have been utilized. Somebody's sleeping and feeding like, you know, and you are the one working for him. Mm. For instance, the, pres the Senate of Nigeria today earns at least 30 million Naira, basic salary every damn month but they can't pay thirty thousand naira. <laughs> not even a, up to a champagne they can't pay you thirty thousand naira. that shows you the system we're living in you know and when they come out to protest they tell their, their killers you know the military and the police and all that to go after you kill them and bring them down you know push them down it's like okay let's build more churches let's build more mosques for them they need to be busy with something they are thinking about working up and that's why every 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 politician is building churches is not building schools because the work of the church is to keep you down amen hallelujah he in me is better than him in the world but he cannot even feel the night <laughs> it makes you so comfortable with nothing <laughs> you see so uh, uh, please share this video share this video let it go around 
So our people just have to understand. I don't I don't longer listen to CNN. I don't listen to news lines, AIT, or the because it's just it's a program. Mm -hmm. And I can also tell you that your educational system is around that program. So they have you at all corners. They have you arranged. For instance, somebody comes around to tell me that Mungo Park, just 26 year old man, discovered River Niger. <laughs> so Jonathan, father, never knew the water was there. <laughs> Why were they called fishermen? <laughs> he possibly discovered it for his family. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what you are taught. You tell me, black man, my four year old child is older than Donald Trump genetically. I know this. I can explain it to you. But it's tell me that I came from another underman Eve. <laughs> How possible is that? That the recessive man will give birth to the dominant man. You know, as a black man, you're a deity. If you go to Rome today, they are Jesus and Mary are all black. They worship blackness. Yeah. But they sell whiteness to you. But come on. A handshake with a white man and squeeze it and he's looking red already. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> So, I know my benefits. I know who I am. And then the changing narratives every day that are giving us things, just lying, building churches. They're not building schools. They're not building industries. Churches in every street. No place to work. Why wouldn't the kids, why would our children grow up to be kidnappers? They have to feed. You got it? For us to recover from the nonsense we're living in, in Africa today, just as the Europeans did, we have to begin to convert the churches, the mosque, to place of learning, place of work. And you know, universe don't lie. You see, it, they have given us so much resources. We have so much, so much. And we're starving. The universe is not happy. So there's bound to be a crisis. We must balance this. And they are leaders, I don't want to mention names because you no, know, these guys are bigger than you can think, you know. They are, they are agents of those that control this world. Those ones that the Russians said, no, you can't control us. The Chinese said, no, you can't control us. And recently, the North Koreans said, no, you can't control us. And before you can say no, you must have the Abba Father and the Holy Ghost fire, which is the nuclear weapon. <laughs> you get it? So... We just understand it. We have to understand what's going on in this world. The world is so small. If you get spiritual, you could just see it for what it is. And I tell you, no civilization or epoch can control this world without controlling Africa. The Europeans, when they got their ass together, the first thing they reach is to control Africa because there's a lot of resources and spiritual, spiritual powers here you need to run this show. And today, the Chinese are here too. The Chinese are here too, man. And uh, they, if you go to South Africa, Chinese say that for you to work in a company, you have to learn Mandarin. That is their language. Hmm. Yeah, to steal your tongues, your tongues, your vibration. When you speak every word, word is power. As you speak it out, you send out energy to the world. They want to steal that too. And then... Uh, they, they, somewhere in uh, Oshu or so, I heard that they brought their deity, even Ogu states, or Mowu, to be precise. Every time, every once in a year, they will bring their deity, you have to bow down to their Buddha. They want to take Africa too. And Africa want to go to heaven. <laughs> the white man illusion. Africa doesn't understand that as these are bulls, so it is below. So you don't need the heaven. You simply live out your reality here. You understand? We just have to whip the hell up to make you understand this whole thing properly. Once they come with their um, theology, their lies, the next thing they have a headquarter for that lies. Mm. And the headquarter for the lies of Christianity is in Nazareth, Jerusalem. So you have to go to Israel. Do you know what it means to go to Israel? You pay a flight ticket. First, you have to get a visa. Mm. You have to get a visa to see the land of your God. You pay a human being. <laughs> you, you, you pay a human being some money to, to make ends meet, to go see the land of your God, you know. 
and then you pay flight ticket to and fro you land in the airport you need some people to help you out and you have to tip them they show you a way around taxi you have to pay into that economy you have to lodge into a hotel you have to buy food into that economy you are building that economy unconsciously but you don't know self-hate then you're a muslim you know you're a muslim and then uh, you have to go and see uh, Medina, the Saudi Arabia, the land of the God. And don't forget that Arabic language is the, lang or the word of, uh, language of the God of uh, Arabs, you know. And the same thing still plays out. They're going to come and give you some seeds. It's a mustard seed. You oh, chew yeah. it. You chew it and you get killings. And you have to pay for mustard seed. Uh, you <laughs> take this oil. You take this sticker. This is what Africa will be wasting our time. For over 200 years and they tell me you have leaders here we have dealers yes who cares only about their pockets if uh, there's any leader you know that doesn't know this reality i'm speaking out here today then he uh, he's just a fool if you don't know that religion is a business and politics is a business democracy is a business one thing is that somebody will always want to give you something so that when you have difficulties, he comes in and you pay for his services. And that's why the technicians don't show you the solution to your problem. They resolve and go. So once it goes down, you call them back to fix it. So democracy is just one of those things that they're giving to Africa. That we'll always keep experimenting. We're calling America. And that's why you see when they protest, they say, okay, the world I watch, you know, they are seeing us. What the hell do we need the world for? The world was there when they enslaved us. Mm. <laughs> are you getting it? We as a people should be able to solve our problems. Resolve these issues. You know, make life better for ourselves. What does it cost to begin to open up our economy? Begin to do, build roads, build schools, teach technology. Forget about the theory. Teach, pra teach practical things. I, I'm, a, I'm a solar energy expert. I tell you, I can light up a village if we're sponsored. But then you go to school, they're telling you, uh, drawing lines. What the fuck do you need lines for? <laughs> Bring the equipment and let people see it and they will know it within two weeks. Then after studying engineering for five years, graduate to work in your establishment. And then you have to take it for six months training. So that means it's okay. For, within six months, you can know everything. But mm -hmm. go waste your time. Go pay money in our institutions, in our system. You know, Pay some money there. Uh, let, let us make some money <laughs> from you. Are you getting it? That still brings me to telling you that Educational system is another program. Because they don't teach, don't teach you the reality. But a lot of our people don't know these things. We don't seem to care, you know. We remain waiting on the Lord. And the Lord, in this context, is as a white man. Uh, and in the real sense, you know, the white man is not what, to an African is anybody that does not have melanin. And that person is the savior. Because um, that, that's the reality of sin, you know. You understand? This one is gone off, man. So, thank you, my people watching. Yeah, oh, wait, running up. Oh, my God. You can play the, play the other song. Yeah. yeah. People watching from the conscious room, thank you very much. It's my pleasure having you here. We are at uh, Victoria Island, a co hotel opposite it. Thank you very, very much. Mm. Stupid things about the people and the religion. And after that, we can come on up. So we are on a musical break. Hold on. It's called glory. <laughs>
So we got about 20 minutes. Yeah. Your time? Okay. One hour gone. Yeah, it's gone already. Huh? It's supposed to end up uh, one You see? We don't even know. Okay, once he comes back, we conclude. Yeah. They come Jesus, they come Jesus. They come Jesus, they are Jesus. Safari has a son. My people make on a wake up, wake up, wake up. If you do really believe in the church, oh, I don't want to know. If you really believe in the Moscow, me, I don't want to know. If you believe in the pastors, I don't want to know. If you believe in the Mambo, me, I don't want to know. My page is the X. Uh, what we're trying to do here is to wake up ourselves because it takes none but ourselves to free ourselves. No foreign aid, no nothing. So I'll be closing now and I pray for the spirits of our ancestors to guide you. I would I, I don't have to pray in any name, any name, except from that of our ancestors because that's where we have the community, spiritual community. That's where we relate. We are one people. And uh, if you have heard this, share this, tell somebody to tell somebody. I don't, if you wake up along the line, I don't uh, require you or expect you to come and appreciate me for any reason. The only way you can appreciate me is to wake up the next man, you know, make this man understand that we have been utilized for so long. They have been riding on our back, telling us they are giving us foreign aids, you know. Because uh, without us, the industries in Europe and America would have run because they've been using our fuel for so long. And they give us peanuts in the daytime. They take our gold, and gold diamond, coal, and cobalt and the rest of them in the night. And um, if you wake up, that'll be good for us. Don't tell me you're too old to wake up because you don't die. We reincarnate. We are everlasting. You know, we are the ancient of days. So thank you all very much, and I'll be signing out now. Thank you, Limo, for having me here. Thank you too. Uh, my, my appreciation, and my people in the conscious room. Yeah, thank you too. Bye.